Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. But what is odd is I sent out an email notification, a text, and I don't see any, any either one of them. So, and I'm getting text messages saying, where is the prayer call this morning? So give us just a quick second. Um, just making sure it did go out. Okay. Number two. All right. I went out. Um, so Matt, how you doing, brother? Uh, first, thank you. This is uh this is a, a Sabbath day. This is a day of of rest and just hanging with the Lord. And um there's a lot that uh, has been on my heart throughout the week, and I just want to say thank you guys for for showing up. Um, this is one of those uh, those times in our life where we get the opportunity to to pray with one another, and it's a blessing. So keep keep your mind in that in that realm where this is this is our time together this is a, a blessed time and this is a time in which we are um going to uh going to lift up our thoughts um to the lord and i'm telling you he is super super excited um to hear from us and that's our pops so hold on just trying to respond to some people So, Father, Dad, Abba, you are omnipotent, holy, pure, above reproach, without sin. You're, a, you're our Father who created each one of us, who knows our future. Who knows our fate. Lord, I don't want to be one of those guys that reads the word and only sees the negative in the word. Or the, the hardship for the believer in the word. Because there is the word that speaks to the believer. That shows the believer we are the conquerors in the end. Lord, help me to convey that to people, that they don't need to live in this mindset of defeat, in this mindset of worrisome, in this mindset of, of just not knowing what to do with their life. We have an opportunity today, Lord, to first give you praise, give you thanks, fellowship, have a somewhat of an assemblance of koinonia, just that fellowship, the Greek word, with each other here as we are all doing, wanting to do the same thing, which is just pray. Lord, prayer is a form of worship too. And when we thank you in our prayer, it's being converted from a supplication or a request to a form of worship. And so, Lord, help us to always have that nature in our heart where we're worshiping and where we're giving you thanks. Thanks for the food. Thanks for the gas tank. Thanks for the smile from my loved ones. Thanks for the hug. Thanks for a special person in my life that said something kind. Thanking the Lord God for every good thing that takes place. Thanking our Father in heaven for what he has granted us. A, a peace, a solitude, a surety of who we are in heaven. A peace while we are here on earth. Knowing the outcome that we are victors. And to watch this play out and watch the actors who are in control of the world, kind of. I see a people rising up and I see a defeat to the enemy. 
And I see Revelation 6 where they will be crying like little babies in the rocks and the caves, begging the Almighty Father for mercy. Lord, what a great day. This Sabbath, this time, this Saturday that we get to hang out and just lay our needs at your feet. Help me, Lord, to change the mindset of the people listening to be able to create the environment for themselves of safety, surety, fearless, where they know, Lord, you are walking with them, where they know, Lord, they are surrounded by angels, and they actually believe it. It's funny, today we have people that believe in ghosts, believe in extraterrestrials, believe in aliens of all breeds, sizes, and everything, but can't believe in angels that want to protect them, want to protect their land. So help us be that sovereign, the son of God, the daughters of God, casting down demons using our authority in the name of Yeshua. Help us to be like kings, shock callers, ordering our angels to do our work. Ordering, I say that literally, they are just waiting. Help us, Lord, to believe that every single day for ourselves, that we are dominion holders. Genesis 6. That we take authority over every inch, including the unseen inches. That we can remember that the principalities and powers in this world exist beyond our eyesight. And Lord, that we learn to control our environment with the Holy Spirit. Lord, that our safety and our surety is a guarantee. And that we're soft in every area to our family. And we become a hardened, stable garrison for our family. That they know they have safety and surety around us, that we bring comfort to them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I am completely surrounded by cats right now. <laughs> Just help me out. Somebody help me out, please. <laughs> um. Okay, so real quick story on these guys. I got them when they were two weeks old or week old they were like literally this big and i'm if you can imagine me i'm 6'4 290 um okay 295 and uh i'm just in love with these little guys you know and i we we bottle fed them for a good month and a half and then we now they're on me and these tabbies one looks like an actual tiger so we call them tigger and one looks uh like orange orange tang so we call them tang tigger and tang and i didn't know this about tabbies but if you're going to have one you better have two because tabbies are like little terrors um but they're the biggest little lovers in the world but they are terrors they will rip this house apart and it's fun to watch it is literally fun to watch um but they're getting huge and uh they crawled all over me all night long i got like almost no sleep i almost forgot to do this call to be honest with you um i got reminded at 8 eight thirty. but uh we guys we are blessed we are so blessed um to have each other to hang out to be together um to realize that we are conquerors that we are the end game this is the end game and and it's the beginning of times. It's 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 the end of the devil's game. It's not the end of our game, it, but it's the beginning of times, and it's also the beginning of woes for people, not all people, but people. And so, 
to to listen to a lot of pastors out there talk about these times they 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 talk about them in a position of a rapture and what even though a rapture isn't biblical there are verses that support it and i don't have really an opinion either way so listen but when i'm when i'm i'm preempting what i'm about to say with that comment i don't really have an opinion either way if there is a rapture praise god praise god we're out of here before it all goes down but there is serious arguments, um, even amongst scholars and in, in the word, uh, amongst many pastors that will say it could be a mid-trib, meaning tribulation period, that seven-year period, or it could be a late trib or even a post-trib type of scenario where it's a rapture. Um, there are certain like verses that they use for all of those scenarios. So I stopped living my life waiting or a rapture because there's a lot of the book of revelations that and other books that we really should be reading and 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 not pushing it out because it doesn't play out into the realm of possibilities for us and so i i stopped living my life like we were going to get pulled out because really there's no other place in the word where god pulls people out before the harvest you know he wants people to go through jonah you know Many examples in the Bible where people went through the hardships of the harvest would be plenty. And and I kind of see that for us here. And I'm not saying it's a woe. I'm saying it's a hello, let's get our crap together so we can serve God and pull as many people into the harvest as we can as we're as we're going. And so as we're watching the breakouts of of this Bible coming to life with the World Economic Forums. We're, I think we're watching a bunch of plays. I think we're watching a bunch of acts. And and we're seeing, um, you know, there's a reason why they call them acts, A-C-T-S, of Congress. There's, there's a reason. Um, there's a reason why they call them opinions of the Supreme Court. And, uh, and they're very much telling you something with these words. We're watching acts play out at the World Economic Forum, at uh, Davos, at you know all these things where people are busting out, just screaming and yelling, calling them what they are. Um, I think they're acts, and um, we're watching Germany's uh, farmers and um, uh, Dutch farmers, and you know people stand up all over this world and literally, literally spraying horse and cow and dung directly on the government buildings. Um, it's pretty rad to see some of the people around the world standing up against tyranny because, and, and I don't have any disdain. I just want to preface what I'm about to say. I don't have any disdain towards a government. I am super pro government. I am super pro the structure of government. I do see the tyranny. I, I see the plays on both sides. You know, I see the accountability desire for voting and i see a complete and total moral breakdown and and where county after county has uh 20 000 more um, voter registrations than people that live in the county and there's nothing that's being done about this stuff i see the moral breakdown in our in our in our media um i see the moral breakdown in that structure of government where people are making edicts and and things that are totally against the will of the people where the constitution is completely set aside and knowing that um you have to know the law on the other side like there is law that literally says if a judge goes outside of his judicial canons and he violates his oath of office that you can take him down to the local light pole and hang him on the spot and th this is federal law this isn't made up yeah it's a hundred years old but it, it's shepherdize case you know law and there's law also to protect the people and uh from the tyrannical forms of government that we're facing and the one of the major ones is the second amendment and you start hearing the people standing up all over this country saying when do we get to start shooting and the guy's like what literally asked the question at a big conference i know the Second Amendment exists, and we all can agree that there is a tyrannical form of government taking place. When do we get to use the guns? And you know what? That's a really good question. Now, I don't believe in terrorism. I don't believe in killing anybody. I believe in defending 
people. So when you take a look at really what's going on in the world, you have to assess, am I defending somebody? If I were to take up arms against a structure like that, and could I even do it? And the answer is no, you couldn't. Do you call upon the Lord to do it? Why not? Because people think in their own realm of possibilities. If I have a burden right here, and I just did it, that might be the spike that sends 5,000 more burdens out there. The tool that they need to develop the burden God's given them. So if God, omnipotent, that's why I started out with the word today, he's seeing it all. It's like, you know, we say 5D chess and we call Trump, you know, he's a 5D chess player, which I don't even truly know what that means and I don't care. God is smarter than AI, smarter than men, smarter than the devil, um, can see the future, knows the outcome, knows he's on the throne for a thousand year millennial reign as his son. He knows he's one. He knows. So to, can you imagine like sitting on the throne, God, and I don't mean to give you this negative depiction, but he's picking his teeth because he's calm. There's no stress with God. And I'm giving you a man image, even though we don't know what he really truly looks like. We know maybe what his son looked like, but imagine God, Creator of the world, creator of the universe, everything that you see. He's picking his teeth calmly. And he's going, oh, Kelby, oh, oh Ariel, oh, my, my boy Brown. Oh, he's picking them all. And he's putting little nuggets on our heart. And we're, we're either responding to him or we're ignoring him. But can you imagine why? He's allowing for the complete and total tyranny and attempt takeover of the world. Attempted global order. He's allowing for it all because all the loose ends, all the law that needs to be broken, all the, 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 the playbook of tyranny in the voter registrations, the playbook of tyranny in the counting, the playbook in the tyranny of, of filing massive amounts of lawsuits against the president for the a retired president for the first time ever in the history of mankind, the playbook of tyranny. And I can go on and on and on with what these guys are doing in law against children against our skies, against our food, against everything. They are literally, whoever these demonic forces are, are literally in a playbook to kill the world. Literally. And I'm saying it boldly because I love you guys enough to say it and stand for you guys and stand up. But that's that's a bold statement and it's a truthful statement. They are literally in a playbook trying to take out people all across this world for many different reasons and we're not going to get into that but it's true and we're literally seeing things that are coming to life that may be scary things that are rolling out and and i want you guys to know it's going to you're going to see things that might be completely scary there is a reason why billionaires are barricading themselves all over the world in Alaska, in Hawaii, um, in deep underground bunkers. And we have to take that into consideration. There's a reason. Does that mean whatever they are doing affects us? It could be. Does that mean they know something that is planned against us? It's no different than what I know in the word of God. Why do I give the scary thought the power over my life when I know the end game has me included? When I know the beginning of times, the reign of God here on earth has me included. How do I know that? I'm saved. What is saved? I believe in the shed blood of Yeshua, the son of 
Yah, the most high God. There is no other God. The most high. I believe that that blood was shed for us. The perfection of love offered to us. If you ever are lonely, I want you to think about this thought. Can you imagine being God? Watching molestation, adultery, robbery, murder, and you are going to give a covenant. It turns into another covenant. Turns into another covenant. Pretty soon you're at the final covenant. And every single covenant, you're like, all they had to do was obey. All they had to do was dot their I's, cross their T's, and obey. Every single covenant was denied by man. Finally, instead of making a covenant that they have to obey necessarily they have to make it he made a covenant that we have to believe back in that day can you imagine seeing christ walking around then you see him humiliated literally humiliated literally his flesh ripped apart literally cat of nine tails lash after lash glass barb steel pulling his flesh literally out of his back, out of his butt, out of his legs, flipping him over, out of his chest, off his face, off of his head. So bad he was unrecognizable. I'm surprised the father didn't bleed to death. Meaning Jesus. I'm surprised he didn't bleed to death. Hey, can I get a closed door over here, please? I am shocked that we live in this realm that a creator of the world loves me, me, so much that he sent his son to do something like that for me. And I sit, and today, I didn't see that happen. I, I didn't live that out. I didn't watch it is complete and total faith that that shed blood happened, changed the history of time, changed the history of this world. Many scholars, books, kingdoms were changed. Realms were changed. Don't get me wrong. The Caesar did not like what was happening in the kingdom, and no, he did not <clears throat> turn the Roman Empire into Christianity for the people. Hold on one sec. I'll be right back. I'm I shut the door real quick. He did not turn the Roman Empire, which was the world order that has never gone away. And I can prove that, I think, in law. He's allowed for everybody to go through what they're going through to get to this position of belief in what he did 2,000 years ago. But imagine living in that time and actually seeing Yeshua, that's his name, Jesus, be crushed by the cat of nine tails, be delivered to a cross, a burden to carry across a tree, up a hill, and to be burdened to be put on the cross. The Father, the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of the universe, gave his son, his only begotten son, to do this. It's the only remedy. It's the only thing that could purchase the title deed to the earth and everything on it, you. It was the only thing worthy. It was the final covenant. And kingdoms have changed based on the life of one man. 
And the devil has done everything in his power to make people believe something different. I'm sorry, guys. I got a lot of noise in my house for some reason right now. So when you... My apologies, guys. I'm going to stop spanging around. And as I believe the Holy Spirit's leading me, I, I get sidetracked. Give me a sec. There he is. Oh my gosh. That's better. So when you look at the love of the Father, you know, you look at perfection. His son lived a perfect life. His son rose against tyranny, by the way. His son stood against evil. His son told the truth in the synagogues. His son flipped the tables. That's why they didn't like him. They went from the best seats to having to truly be servants, and that wasn't what they wanted. And being a servant is the highest call from a, from a loving God. Being a servant, there's nothing better. You don't need necessarily the best seeds. There's something about serving mankind that is life-changing for me. It's certainly life-changing for you guys, I'm sure. The feeling of covering somebody. And I got to tell you something. I'll tell you a story. Don't laugh at me. I was on the way back on a road this this weekend, this last weekend, and I stopped. And I was at the uh, the border. When we went to a quinceanera, I've never been to one. It's kind of cool. But I stopped at the border, and as I'm getting back into my truck, a guy pulls up and. He rolls down his front window and his back window and I'm getting ready for anything. You know, I don't know what's going on. And we're in the middle of a parking lot. And he, he says, I barely speak English and um, I need help. And I said, what's up? He said, Americans hate me. And I'm like, Americans don't hate you. He said, I'm Muslim. Are you, are you Muslim? I said, I said, no, I said, you know, I said, do you, do you speak Arabic or Farsi or, or what? And he said, I speak Arabic. And, um, we tried to communicate. Bottom line is he's he's like, I lost my wallet. Typical, you know, it sounded like scammy, right? And uh, and I always help people, especially with a kid and somebody that's going to reach out. But I always look for the scam too, you know? And both, like my lady is, she's all over that kind of stuff. She's like the, she'll smell it a, a hundred different ways. But nevertheless, I'm not called to judge at that moment. I'm called to be frugal and, you know, with not frugal, that's the wrong word, to to determine if there's the truth element and, and there's really that need. Bottom line, I gave him like 60 bucks and it's nothing. But then he says, and he starts pulling gold out and... And I'm like, and he's like, I need to go all the way to Sacramento to get an ID. And uh, there's, that's the only place where there is a secretary of state for his country, um, whatever it was. And, and, and he's like trying to hand me gold. And we like tried to turn him down like five times the gold. Cause I was going to help him no matter what. 
And the story seemed legit. I looked in the little girl's eyes. I looked in the wife's eyes to determine if there was any, you know, awkwardness in the little girl, whether she was scared, whether she was kidnapped. You know, I looked for anything, really. The mom and the daughter and the father, they all looked alike. And I, so look, I've been in this pickle before in my life. So if if somebody were to come around like me, you know, I probably would have done anything to get help. So we got his phone number, by the way, he didn't expect that because um, we were able to, he handed us his phone and, and she dialed my number real quick and it came through on my phone. And, but I ended up giving the guy like 350 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever it was. And, and I said, look, just bring back, you know, I was going to be a gift if I never saw him again, obviously. But I said, if you, because he kept trying to hand me this goal. He said, look, it's 18 karat. He shows me and tried to scrape it on his window. And I'm like, look, it's not about the gold. I just, if I, this is big money, and if you get your wallet back and you're telling me the truth, go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. But if not, you have a good life kind of a thing. Bottom line is um, he, he, he literally almost forced the gold on me. And I said, look, I'm holding it for you. If you need more help, whatever, you got our number and, uh, and let me know when you, you know, we were just trying to get, get to Sacramento, take care of yourself. And, but guys, he was pouring tears. He was extremely grateful, handshaking, extremely, you know, but it was all a scam. Come to find out later. And I'm not going to tell you how we found out, but it was, the gold wasn't real. Um, come, well, I'll tell you, he, he's there all the time doing this and he uses this particular spot because people can't get back to that spot, you know, quick enough to determine. And there's probably not a gold testing facility for a couple hundred miles. It's genius. But I, uh, I got scammed and then I, I literally, I, for one second, God checked me. Did you do it for me? Or did you do it for the gold? And I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm like, oh, snap. Did you do it thinking he wasn't going to come back for the gold? And you, I literally checked myself and I said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, my heart. And this is where we, we hear that your heart is deceitfully wicked. You know, you're always thinking about yourself. You're always worried about yourself. Because it's not easy to earn 300 bucks. And you're always thinking, what is the best place I can put, put this? And sometimes God calls you to put it in somebody else's pocket. And no matter what, that guy's pocket got lined that day. And since I had his phone number, I texted him. As you already know, the chain, the metal, the gold chain is fake. May God bless you and your family. And I didn't say anything about the, you know, what he did. I didn't make one extra comment. And that's all I, something like that. May God bless you and your family. And that was it. I could file charges on the guy. I know his phone number. If it's, you know, I know what the car is. I know all that stuff. But my whole point for telling you was even in the time of gifting, I had to check myself after the fact when I found out the gold was fake. And it's not because I got caught doing a bad deal. It's because I got caught thinking I might have made a deal. You know what I mean? And that's the heart. Did I do it for God or did I do it for Calvi? And initially, that guy... I was, I was trying to just do it for him, but that lure, you know, take this, take this. And we are like, no, 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 no. You can't, no, you take this. Cause he really wanted to do the act to get more money. That lure turned it from a heart of, okay, it's no longer a gift. I'm covered. I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. I got my gold. I'm covered. And I felt like I had made a good deal that day. And, and I'm being very honest with you guys, but I got, I got kicked in the nuts. 
and I realized at that moment I got had and, uh, and I still blessed him. Praise God. I was able to just bless him instead of calling him every name in the book, because I, I feel sorry for the guy. I feel sorry for that little girl being raised by a con man and a con woman. And I feel sorry for every Muslim that is being represented by him. And I feel sorry for, you know, the family structure. And I feel sorry for, you know, the fact that there has to be lies. I would have helped him no matter what. There didn't need to be a single lie. Sometimes God runs people across. You see, my whole family was in a car like that one time. No money, nothing on the streets, no gas. Probably, you know, some days nothing. And every day was a struggle. Every day. I've been through that. So knowing that, it doesn't matter what their situation is. If it's real, I'm just going to bless them. And unfortunately, that got flipped on me. And I got caught. Instead of, you know, it's just like all of us at the Bema seat. You know, we're going to be judged for the works that we did. And... You're going to see, oh, you're 80%, you're 70%, meaning what you did for God. And the other 30 was for the girl watching, you know, kind of a thing. But God, I, he's, he's he's a good God. He's snickering all the time. He's laughing at us, you know, because we're not perfect. And he knows that we're not perfect. He went through a ton of covenants with his with mankind to develop perfection in his son that all you have to do is believe. And yeah, turn and walk towards him, knowing fully that you're not perfect and that you need him and you need to have relationship with him and you need to talk to him, pray with him, worship him. And those are things that people look at what worship is. Worship is a simple thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for that full tank of gas. So appreciative. You're you're such a good God. I honor you today, Lord. Thank you. Worship. Prayer. Lord, I need this. Help me here. Give me this. Whatever. Prayer. And so what are the requirements we need in a in a daily life? The word, prayer, worship, fellowship, what we're doing today. What we're trying to do today. I mean, we can't like hug each other and all that stuff, but it is what it is. So if uh, if you need a prayer answered, the best place to do it is in a place where you have your brothers and sisters with you and you ask. There is no prayer, no prayer that God will not listen to or answer if you believe. And sometimes it's the belief, the koinonia of the threefold cord, the people around you that will bring in that prayer in, in an answered format, in a format in which you will get a response. It's the belief of the brothers and sisters around you, not necessarily your belief. Let me explain that to you so that you understand why we pray together. I have done a lot of studying on afterlife experiences and experiences of people that have had their lives and prayers and healing happen. So you, I've seen a lot of street healers, evangelists, and the guys that they walk up to, is there anything I need to pray for you about? Do you have anything blind? Are you deaf? Anything? And he says, yeah, I'm, I can't hear my right ear. I'm blind in my right eye or whatever. And I've watched these street healers pray. And I've studied their prayers, their words. They're hard to study a heart, but you can visibly see what's going on in the transaction. And you can see that one, the guy that is the one that was blind in his right eye, whatever, you can see that he's, he's not a man of faith. You can see that, you know, he just allowed for the prayer to just give this guy the time to, to do it. It's this guy that comes in with faith that has had experience that God is walking with, that God is excited about because it's his faith 
that Christ said himself, what I do, you will do greater. It's his faith that calls out the blindness of this guy's right eye. And so he puts his hands over the guy's eye and he starts praying in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. And he said, be delivered, right eye be healed, right eye see fully, see with clarity, have that vision restored, Lord, in Jesus' name. And takes his hand off and he says, can you see any better? And the guy says, yes, a little bit. And, then, and, and now this guy's faith is going, oh my God, this guy is real because something happened. And then he does it again. Then he pulls his hand off, asks me, it's a little better. Now, his faith is stronger than it's ever been. He doesn't know who Yeshua is, but he knows something's going on because this guy believes in the name of Yeshua and he's praying over this guy. Five or six times, this guy's eye gets fully restored, fully able to see for the first time in his life, and now he's weeping. Knowing fully that this is a proper account for us, because we're watching a story or an act until we see the emotions, we see the heart, we see that wow, this is straight up on the streets. These are two guys that probably just met. And so the chances of this being legitimate are pretty high. So I'm going to have faith that they're real because I have experienced these things myself where I had that belief when I had that faith and I was able to heal broken bones, where I was able to heal drugs being removed from my body when I was a kid. And so in that experience, those life experiences, watching this now live. It was the faith of a guy that was the believer. And it wasn't even the faith of a guy that had the cancer, that had the blind eye, had the deaf ear. Isn't that amazing? So it works both ways. Just like the woman who was had a bleeding issue for 12 years. And it, she just thought, if I could only grab the hem or the foot of Jesus. I can only get his attention in the crowd. She was crawling on the floor. She grabbed the hem and the word of God says instantly she was healed and Jesus felt the power leave him. It says through his cloak, not even his body necessarily, you know what I mean? Through the cloak and heal the woman. It was now her faith why she had seen, she had heard this guy healing everybody in the regions. The Roman emperor, not the emperor, but the Roman centurion. Daughter, sick. Jesus healed her after he told her, just, just say the command. I have many people under me. I know what you can do. Just make the command and she will be healed. And Jesus said, not even the people in my own of my own village, my own kind, the Jews have this kind of faith. And this was a Roman soldier. Once again, faith. Faith that he can do it from afar. She had faith that if I can just touch him, the healer had faith in the name of Jesus to heal the eye, to heal the ear, to heal the leg. I had faith in Jesus to heal me. A broken bone. Listen to me, guys. This is why we do this. Bridges, mountains, oceans, things that you feel like are really big are movable with one word in the name of Jesus. So those insignificant things like cancer, those insignificant things that you're dealing with in life, possession, oppression. You have an evil spirit hovering over you. That's what oppression really is. You have allowed for certain things into your life to surround you and encamp. One word in the name of Jesus can blow that all out and forever change your life. One, 
and faith. And it could be the faith of me. It could be the faith of Bill or Brian or any of the guys that are listening and praying with us. This is why I ask when we start praying, please just pray in the name of Jesus and agree with me. Touch the imaginary screen or chest or heart or shoulder or mind or forehead of the person in your mind at your home and agree in the, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, that you agree in these healings of people that are coming on to this prayer call. Do that for all of us. That's what koinonia is for. Four basic things to live life out. Love them with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's a depiction of the commandments. Look at the commandments. Read them. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's a depiction of all the commandments. And if you can do that, and you believe in the blood, you're going to make mistakes, but you're always going to turn. And you're going to say, Father, forgive me. Help me. Keep me on path. Help me walk towards you. And he will lead you. And he will cover you. And he will walk you right through these end of game scenarios. Fear nothing. Fear not, says the Lord. Believe upon that. Don't believe pastors that are just giving you the woes. Believe that Jesus, that God has the best for you in a covering and security in the feelings of emotional states that put you in states of fear that you wash that away. Believe that God loves you. It's the lies of the devil that will turn the hearts of men in those days. And the Bible even says that. Because they will not believe God loves them enough to protect them. They will not believe God loves them enough to get them through this lack of food situation, this lack of whatever, or this tyranny, or all these things. But I assure you, if you keep the right mindset and trusting in God and having the faith that he has the best for you, that is all that will happen to you, is the best that God has to offer. He loves the believer. He loves even the non-believer. Yeah, he hates her sin. And yes, there is some parts in the Bible where it says he hates the sinner. I know there's a lot of people that debate that. I'm not here to debate that with you. All I know is God so loved us, the sinners, all of us, our sinners, that he gave us his son. And the whole world was forever changed based on the finished work of the cross. The times that were being recorded, the history charts, and it's all been a cover-up ever since. And now the cover-up is going to that extreme. If you do not know this, they're coming against Christianity in a big way. Um, there is New York legislation right now and legislation that will be brought into a more nationalized basis in short order that if you are a christian if you are a christian um, and you're raising a family that you will be looked upon like a domestic terrorist like a um, you're doing something wrong they do not want children to be raised in Christian homes. They are first going after the Christian community. If you're a Christian, you are not allowed to help social services, CPS children. They're taking that right away from Christianity. The LGBTQ has stepped in so hard that that is the primary family now for a CPS child. I want you to think about what I just said. And the Christian family unit is going to be pulled out from that and supporting those children that have been taken from families. And they're going to be giving them to demonic sources. Right now in this nation, there has never been a bigger trafficking period of time where kids are being brought over our border and sold into sexual slave trade by the United States government. 
There's never been more evil portrayed by a corporation masquerading as a government than what we have today. We, the people, are the government. We, the people, are one under God. We, the people, by an operation of law in this nation, are known as the United States of America. The United States Corporation has exclusive jurisdiction in a seven-square-mile area known as the District of Columbia, also known as the District of Goddess of Death and Destruction. They do not have dominion over all the earth. It is by contract, by your willingness to contract with them, that they have dominion over you and your children. This is why we say come out. It's an understanding of contract law with the devil. And so we are choosing differently for ourselves. And God will honor that. Let's pray. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to read through real quick. If it's comments, I'm not going to read. If it's prayer requests, I'll, I'll read it. But I appreciate the comments too as well. Pray that my daughter's lawyer will take her case to an expedited trial. She's taking a job as a magistrate by March 4th, but we paid a paid her a fortune just for a trial. The other side keeps court wrapped up in constant motions. All need to just go to trial. Pray all hearing get canceled that we can go to trial, 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 trial. Um, she wants to get finished the hearing. We're good four years. Okay, Father. Very specific prayer request. And a lot of times, Lord, we don't know why you do what you do. I first just pray a covering over the judge in this case, in the court. And Lord, I ask for dominion and favor over this person's daughter. Lord, sometimes our prayers are not what we think they are to be. And sometimes we're praying for things that maybe don't make sense to you. And you allow for things to happen that will actually clear up and make a better result. So, Lord, I'm not going to pray for his will. I'm going to pray for your will. And I'm going to pray specifically that the daughter has victory, in this case, at trial. However you get there, Lord, in Jesus' name, allow for the transaction to be seamless and that all the tricks of the devil and all the tricks of the court system get pushed aside and that the truth gets revealed. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for this opportunity. Um, but we pray your will, your blood over this case with a victory for the this girl in Jesus' name. True. Thank you. I need God's guidance for his blessing to have success in finding a way to earn money so I'm able to relocate to anywhere where I'm safe and surrounded by people who speak the Lord's name every day and appreciate my value. I seek peace, hugs, reassurance. You know what? You just wrote a prayer in Jesus' name. Is it that you give this woman the the prayer request that she just stated and that she is surrounded and she does find the work and that she is blessed beyond and Lord that's Konania is that fellowship is perfect Lord in you and I I pray for the same thing over all of us that we are surrounded by brothers and sisters that want to be part of our life want to pray with us want to support us want to help us want to be like that Amish style family kind of structure where they, they all come out and build the build the barn. Lord, in Jesus' name, we just bless um her and uh and we thank you for all that you're doing and uh in, in that covering, but give her the work and give her the fellowship and give her the support that this woman is asking for. Amen.
Many of those CPS children shouldn't be taken from their original mom and dad. If that's the case, ask those children to be restored. In Jesus' name, I agree. 100% I agree with those comments. Uh, I don't even think CPS should be involved. Um, it's unfortunate because when you look at the patterns of what's going on in the nation, what's being allowed with the drugs that are hitting the streets and, and um, the broken nature of homes and uh, the separating of the family unit and, and social media, it's all a big plot and plan. And um, to divide the families and, and keep people from loving marriages and and different things like that. Unfortunately, I had a CPS called on us. Um, we had a nanny when I was two years old. My kid was two years old. And CPS was called on the nanny. And it was done by another nanny who was pissed off at her. And it was just a joke, you know. But it wasn't a joke. CPS asked to pull down my kid's pants at that time. I didn't know any different. I didn't know rights, laws, all that stuff. And... Uh, it's humiliating. I couldn't stand there and protect my kid, my my own children from from somebody coming into my house and staring at my kid's ass every which way. And I'm like, I think you've seen my child's butt enough. Um, CPS is looking for any reason to steal kids. They are the largest child trafficking ring in the world, and I say that boldly because there's enough evidence to prove what I just said. I'm going to read this from Masulu. Never lose heart, brothers and sisters. Our God is not done. Yeah, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Boom. Mic drop. And of love and of sound mind. Thank you, Asulu. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this verse. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Beautiful. Jeremiah 29, 12. Then shall ye call upon me and ye go, shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you, meaning I will answer your prayers. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me and when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Just thank God. Pray out. He hears. Thank you, brother. Um, I requested prayers for my brother to see who and how might the Lord is for him to expect the Lord. Father God, I don't really understand that prayer request, but I'm asking that you give the heart of the individual that's asking to help his brother see you, Lord, and, and do the burden of his brother's heart towards his brother. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, bro. Lord, I just lift up... Um, this person's father, just the, the head general health that you just cover them and just be with them in Jesus' name and release them of any burdens or hardship or, you know, these things that we think that we have to live with. Lord, help the faith teams come out, help the prayer warriors come out and just put hands on him and just restore his body to health and give him several more years, Lord, with family just to enjoy times. And um, we pray this in Jesus' name. Thanks. Oh, Howard says uh, his wife passed a four millimeter, milliliter, millimeter, a kidney stone. That's an ouch. Just pray for relief. Lord, we lift up Laura. This is hard stuff. Um, we just pray for general relief. And, um, and there are things that she could put in her body right now to help those things pass and just help her to get that done ASAP. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Father, I just lift up everybody. We just went through all their uh, few prayer requests, Lord. Um, there are people that um, need prayer and they're not asking for it. And I always feel that. 
And for those people that need prayer and that don't know how to ask for it or don't want to put their name out there, Lord, I just lift up their needs to you right now. And I ask that you just put a loving hand on them and that they can come and meet you right where they are in front of that computer screen or in front of that phone. And Lord, that you show them that you love them. They feel the presence of God in the room. And Lord, that you meet their needs and you start that relationship with them today that maybe they haven't felt before. And Lord, we love you. We thank you. And for those new people that don't know really what's going on, they just feel the need to follow a loving God or feel the need to have a God or feel the need to learn about this Yeshua Lord, for those people, put a burden upon their heart right now to just believe upon the finished work of the cross. Confess their sins. Lord, help them just walk away from that man that's old, that woman that's old, and to believe that you paid for our debt and help us to walk towards you every single day from here on. And that, Lord, you put people in their life that and still strength and still morally honorable um, where they follow the word and where they are able to teach these new people that are listening, Lord, that we are calling out of the graves, out of demonic strongholds, out of the church of Satan, Lord, where people are going to be delivered on this message, whether now or in the future. We just calling them out, Lord, and they believe that your power, Lord, is the ultimate power because that's what they're seeking is power, Lord. But they find humility. They find peace. They find an overwhelming nature of being released from those demonic strongholds and being filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord. We win this battle with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers. I thank you, Lord, for giving us all provisions for this next week. I thank you, Lord, for helping everybody get through what they need. And Lord, take these hearts of people that are listening and change them from supplication to first worship, being thankful for everything that they have. Help those people change their hearts and watch their prayers get changed in the way that you answer them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just remember something, guys. You as a dad, you as a mom, if your kid was always complaining, always asking, never thanking you, how would you respond? Just think about it that way. And you got a kid that's got that grateful heart, just super appreciative of that jacket, of that toy, of that love, of that hug. You can see their heart change melt. And they thank you. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. Well, what do you want to do? You want to pour into that kid. It's not always easy being a dad pouring into something that doesn't want to be poured into. Because they don't know any better. But guys, God bless you, man. Have a great week. Um, we will be having a town hall meeting today for his advocates members at 3 p.m. Vis the VIP membership. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you this afternoon. Enjoy. And this will be replayed on YouTube at 11 a.m.